we heard in today's gospel and in this feast, God's concern for our children. Once again, we greet you all as friends of our Blessed Lady, and today we're focusing on Mary, disciple of the Lord, as our model during these difficult days. In the wake of the religious situations in places like Chile and Ireland, and closer to home, the recently released Pennsylvania Grand Jury report of clerical abuse, all of us feel anger, and we're very concerned. We can identify with Pope Francis's words addressed this past Saturday to the Irish authorities and the diplomatic corps. The situation, he says, quote, has rightly, rightly given rise to outrage and remains a source of pain and shame for the Catholic community. I myself, he continued, share these sentiments, as do we all. Pope Francis recently issued his letter to people of God. In it, the Holy Father reminds us that we are in this together. It will not be enough merely to take specific steps against abusers and to set up clear procedures to eliminate future abuses. Yes, such specific steps must be taken to protect the innocent and to hold abusers accountable. In themselves, however, such protocols will not fully solve the problem. We need more than these actions if we're to effect the present social context. As the Holy Father reminds us, in reality, the problem involves all of us because all of us are affected by sin. Pope Francis reflects on the words of St. Paul, if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. He urges us as people of God to deal with the present crises as a community. Specifically, he re recommends that together we turn to prayer and to fasting to deal with the present crises. He concludes, to look to Mary is to discover the model of a true follower of Christ. Mary, disciple of the Lord, models for us both prayer and sacrifice. These equip us as church for our faith journey through these difficult days ahead. Mary, the Lord's disciple, was a woman of deep prayer. She listened to God's word. She was attentive to God's word throughout her life. In her encounter with the angel Gabriel, she was the first to hear the good news about the Son of God coming into our world. Her prayer life prepared her well to hear that message from God. Prayer connected her to God who opened her heart to see clearly the will of God in her own life and to accept God's plan for her son. Prayer helped her deal with the unjust, abusive treatment of her son and to view his crucifixion with God's eyes as the pathway to salvation for sinners, including the very ones responsible for her son's death. For us, too, prayer shows us the way. It helps us to see the world as God sees it. Pope Francis underscored the importance of prayer. Prayer opens our hearts to those among us who are suffering. And these days we hold up in prayer all victims of abuse, especially those violated as innocent children many of them years later still dealing with the effects of the abuse by the clergy. Prayer also gives us a clearer vision of abusers themselves. Yes, they are deviants, in many cases permanent threats to society who must pay for their abuse of the innocent, but they are also part of the cohort of sinners 
for whom Christ died. All of us are sinners. No matter how serious our sins, we all remain children of God to whom God offers forgiveness when we are truly sorry for our sins. Prayer helps us curb our instinct to make criminals suffer for the crimes of abusing innocent children. Through prayer, God opens us to another way, a possible penal system that hopefully provides chances for rehabilitation along with mandatory incarceration. Prayer helps us to see things more clearly as God sees them. Most recently, God has been helping our faith community to understand that the death penalty violates respect for God's gift of life. Prayer helps each of us to see more clearly the errors in our ways, both as individuals and as a church. In prayer, God prepares us for deeper conversion. Each of us has sinned. We, all, we are all part of a community that experiences the collective social impact of everyone's sins. It is prayer that puts us in touch with a merciful God. It is our communal prayer, especially at every Mass, that expresses our sorrow for sin and offers our sacrifice with Christ, quote, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Christ alone really present on our altars, is capable of restoring all of us sinners to holiness within his church. In addition to prayer, Pope Francis asks us to fast, to do penance for all our sins. Such penance deepens God's spirit within us. Our communal acts of fasting and penance express our solidarity as sinners who seek the Lord's forgiveness. Penance offsets the impact of all of our sins. Our acts of penance remit the punishment due to us sinners who have sought forgiveness. Mary's prayerful, faith-filled journey carried her all the way to Calvary, where she embraced God's will for Jesus and for herself. There she suffered her greatest cross by participating in her beloved son's cruel and unjust death. There she willingly accepted God's call for herself to join her son in his work of salvation for all sinners. These days we find ourselves especially challenged to imitate Mary. We can imitate her discipleship by committing ourselves not only to profound prayer, but also to doing God's will in our lives. And we know what God's will entails, love, forgiveness. The present social situation of grave abuses affords us opportunities to put divine love into practice. Our love for God and our love for others, most dramatically, our love for sinners. The church witnesses most dramatically to God's love in practice through forgiveness. Forgiveness, first of all, of abusers who have hurt our children, and forgiveness of those in authority who have failed to protect the innocent. In summary, then, we can, we can imitate Mary by doing the following. First, with God's help, becoming women and men of deep prayer. Secondly, living the gospel of love, including forgiveness of all sinners who repent. And thirdly, carrying our burdens with deep faith and trust in God's mercy and love. We do this in our daily personal lives of prayer and by, by participating fully in our parish life. Let me make a practical suggestion. 
As you know, our archdiocese, parishes, and communities will begin to implement the recommendations of Pope Francis. There'll be plans ahead to gather for prayer and celebrations of penance as reparation for our sins. Plan to join our fellow believers in these special celebrations to allow God to soften your heart. Continue to pray for victims of abuse and for the authorities who must deal with grave injustices, notably our bishops and Pope Francis. At every Mass, seek reparation in Christ, not only for your sins, but for the sins of the whole world. We now call upon Mary, disciple of the Lord, our model for prayer and sacrifice. And your response will be, pray for us who have recourse to you. O Mary, mother of sorrows, disciple of the Lord, pray for us who have recourse to you. O Mary, mother of sorrows, disciple of the Lord, O Mary, mother of sorrows, disciple of the Lord. Thank you very much.